Yeah, how you doing everybody? It's Wednesday the 27th of January uh, 2010 and it's just after lunchtime. Yeah, and uh, I read uh, an article yesterday in a paper just in the Independent and uh, it was last night actually, it was later on and uh, I recommended the people to say to have a wee look at, ha 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 have a look at this. Uh, it's to do with Irish banks and it's going to impact on us but it gives you a massive insight into the Irish uh, the problems that face Irish banks. Uh, you know, one of the big problems is obviously here, and it's understandable, um, it's very, very difficult to find out what's going on here from an economic point of view or a political point of view, because everybody waves their own flag. And, you know, so w in order to find out what is actually going, going on, you have to go outside, you have to go outside Ireland. Now, these are not the best, unfortunately, these, the, both these crowds have been discredited, but the two biggest credit agencies in the world f relating to commercial credit, whether it be for you know businesses or whether it be for countries or banks or whatever, big institutions, large institutions in particular, this, these crowds specialise in are Moody's and Standard and Poor's. Now we all know they've been discredited over these uh, these, these toxic debt uh, liabilities that have sold these uh, credit default swaps and all this sort of stuff, all this derivative stuff. So we know about that and we know they've walked large numbers of people in, in, the, in the serious problems. But uh, how the, we, we, we have to take cognizance of what they actually say. It doesn't matter whether you don't agree with it or whatever, it's, it's an irrelevancy. There has to be some, some element of, of, of basis to what they say. The, basically what this is, is this is a, a, an article from The Independent and it's an analysis of uh, Standard & Poor's and as I say they're, they're, they've come up with a, a new reassessment of the credit rating of our banks and they've moved them down a notch and uh, both Allied Irish Banks and Bank of Ireland and uh, that really wasn't that really wasn't the, the key element though of, of the article inside the article there was another thing which even if even even if they only hint at being right it reads terribly bad it really, really does it reads, reads shocking uh, the article is quite a small article and as I say I put the link up to it have we look at it but the third or fourth paragraph that it, it, it tells you here it says that uh, Standard & Poor's raised its forecast for potential problem loans these are the toxic loans that are on the bank's books at Ireland's banks to between 15 and 30 percent they originally were 10 to 20 percent previously in other words they made an assessment last year that uh, the toxic loans on the on the Irish banks books were between 10 and 20 percent so say it was 15 percent all right so you took an average it was 15 percent and now they're saying no no that's not the case we've upped it and we've said it's now between 15 percent and 30%, so if you take the average of that, it's 22.5%, 23%, okay? And if you do the calculation, it's staggering sums of money we're talking about. We're talking about colossal sums. Just listen to this. The central statistics I was tell us that the total loan book of all the Irish banks, all right, is 691 billion. So that's, even if they're wrong by a small percentage, they won't be wrong by a lot, but they'll be wrong by maybe a small percentage. It doesn't matter. So we're still talking about a colossal sum of money. Uh, so say it is 680, just do the calculation. 15% of 691 billion is 104 billion. That's what Standard & Poor's said. It was the loans, the toxic loans, the loans that were impaired were represented 104 billion. They've now upped it and said they're 22.5% of 681 billion, which is 155 billion. Now, I just pose two questions. How are these banks, how are our banks, where are they going to get the money, not only to pay back the bonds, because these, these are all bonds. These are all bonds bought from other banks. How are they going to get the capital to pay that back? Where are they going to get 155 billion? 155 billion is just less than our total GDP this year. Our GDP this year, on projections from the Central Statistics Office again, is going to be 168 billion. Where are they going to get the money? Never mind about the money to pay the, the bonds back. Where are they going to get the money to pay the coupons back? 
if they borrowed this money, say it was cheap money and they borrowed it three, two or three percent, that's still about three and a half billion and, 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 and to pay the coupons they've got to, they've got to find. I mean, these are staggering sums of money. People don't understand the significance of this. What it points to really at the end of the day is both these banks are really insolvent. That's really what they are. They're, they're basically insolvent stroke bankrupt banks. They're zombie banks. They're just, they're gone. They will never be engaged in big loans for the foreseeable future. That is, none of that is going to happen. All the days of handing out big clatters of money and all, gone. Total credit constriction is going to go on in those banks. And what's going to happen? Probably in the foreseeable future, they're going to be nice lives. They're going to be just taken over by the state because there's no, there's no way, there's no, there's no way as commercial entities they can survive. Don't matter what the profit element of it is. It doesn't matter. They make one billion or one and a half billion profit. No matter. It doesn't resolve these problems. These problems are colossal. Anyway, it doesn't it just it just read really really bad. I don't want to be the harbinger of constantly giving out bad news, but that's the way of it. Another thing, I got a phone call uh, yesterday. I was talking to a friend of mine. He was in Dublin, and uh, I, I, I know, I, I, I know these people. So that's why he told me, told me that uh, this jeweler shop. It's been in Dublin from 1720, the first half of the 18th century. Imagine that. Survey Dublin, the Napoleonic stuff, all the overthrow of the monarch state in France, the American Revolution, 1776. All the 19th century wars all through Europe surveyed all those. Uh, the First World Crimea War, First World War, Second World War, all that sort of stuff. Go to the business now. Two things. Probably some sort of internal thing within in the West Farms. They're called Wests, by the way. Then Grafton Street in Dublin, up at the top of Grafton Street. And uh, wonderful shop, wonderful jeweler shop. Very expensive, obviously. You need a lot of money to go into it. but. That's life, and uh, you would expect that after they would have made a success of some, some of what they've done after nearly nearly three hundred, imagine three hundred years gone. And I'd say it's a combination of two things, probably some sort of maybe internal thing within the family, but the, I think the thing thing would be the cost of the leases and or maybe the sold up or whatever. But just what's staring them in the face is just oblivion. The, the, the future for disposable income in this country is it's, it's only heading one way that way. Anyway, we talk more. Good luck, everybody.